the best sponge cakes in the city. Nam Hua Tea Parlor, which was the first dim sum restaurant in Chinatown. And they're only $1.50 each. Many people here pass by and not, don't even know what it is. The lobster, Meats. beef, tomato, pickle, and uh, onion. You saw him making it. Let's try it. What's up, everyone? I recorded this video on January 5th, 2022 and it's 45 Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be walking through Chinatown today and also be ending this video at the new 98 food court on Mott Street where I'll be showing you some things that I've eaten. So stay tuned for that. But I'm here at the beginning of Canal Street at the base of the Manhattan Bridge. Kind of a gloomy day today, but it was raining for most of the morning. We've got the Bowery Savings Bank building on that corner. I think I'll take a walk west along Canal Street. It's named Canal Street because there are canals underneath Canal Street. They used to drain this big body of water called the Collect Pond into the Hudson River. And those canals are still there because there's a lot of natural springs in the area. And that water needs to go somewhere. There's also a subway which runs underneath Canal Street, so you can imagine the amount of infrastructure underneath our feet. And Canal Street used to be known as the Diamond District before it was taken over by the 47th Street area in Midtown Manhattan. But we can still see remnants of that Diamond District as I walk through Canal Street. If you see right here, there's a bunch of jewelry vendors. The Lucky Diamond Corp. And also across the street is another jewelry center. There's also a sign up here that says, Welcome to Chinatown. Canal Street is also home to many sidewalk vendors too, who sell uh, fox bags and um, clothing. So we'll see a lot of them standing around on the street and peddling their supplies. This is Mott Street. We'll be walking down here a little bit later, but that pagoda-like building at the top there, this is the home of the On Long Merchants Association which has a lot of influence um, in the area. Mott Street along with Canal Street are the most developed areas of Chinatown and were the original parts of Chinatown that were developed. Even though this is no longer the Diamond District, there is still a lot of jewelry trade going on. A 
This is one of the newer places that opened in Chinatown, Tiger Sugar. They're just famous for their brown sugar bubble tea from Taiwan. I'm not sure if this truck driver is going to have enough clearance to turn onto Mulberry. This street up here is the beginning of Little Italy. Chinatown is also a great place if you want to get souvenirs because they've got great prices on some of this merchandise. Three for ten dollar baseball caps. They've also got two for ten over here, kitchen aprons and hats. We've got Baxter Street over here. I just want to turn to the street for a little bit just to show you a few things. Over here is the front side of the Most Precious Blood Church. It's an Italian-American church and it's most famous for the Shrine of San Gennaro, the patron saint of Naples. That's where most of the uh, Italian-Americans along Little Italy come from, from the Naples region of Italy. And over here is the Cam Hing Bakery. They're really known for their sponge cakes. The best sponge cakes in the city. Those of you who can read Chinese can make out what this says. But it's 85 cents for the plain sponge cake for each one. And if you get the flavored sponge cakes, they're a dollar each. I've even done a review on the sponge cakes on my Action Kid Extra channel. The flavored ones are definitely worth trying, even though they cost more. And for those prices, it's hard to get a better value anywhere else in the city. Canal Street is a busy thoroughfare for drivers getting over to New Jersey because it connects directly to the Holland Tunnel and the Manhattan Bridge on the other side.
this uh, crosswalk is also a bit tricky because the cars get the green light first to make a left turn and people often cross in front of this crosswalk here but the other side gets the walking signal Here's the Canal Street subway station. One of three subway stations that directly serve Chinatown. Here you can get the NQ, RW, number six train, and J and Z. And on Grand Street and Christie Street, you can get the B and Z, and also on the eastern side of Chinatown, there's the East Broadway station served by the F train. Let's cross Canal Street now. I want to show you some things that are happening down here. Also, something really major is going to be changing. Some new construction going up. Don't really know what this is going to become. Maybe there's a, uh, a plaque here or something that shows what's going to be here. Commercial building. Here you can get a dollar twenty-five pizza at ninety-nine cents pizza. So confusing name, but it's been happening around the city more and more. The dollar pizza slice, the legendary dollar pizza uh, slice, is getting harder to find. This here is Walker Street. You can kind of use this street as like a shortcut to the main parts of Chinatown without having to walk on busy Canal Street. So a pro tip for those who are exiting the subway, you can go here to Walker Street and avoid most of the crazy car traffic. If you just keep going straight, you'll hit Canal Street again. Down there is the Manhattan Civic Center, home to most of the government offices in the city, including City Hall and the Manhattan Municipal Building, as well as the Federal Building and also the New York State Courthouse. Actually, you can consider this as part of the Civic Center too because this is also the uh, Civil Courthouse. And over here is the area I want to show you. This is the Manhattan Detention Complex, aka the Manhattan Prison. And there's been a lot of 
debate and controversy, but what's going to happen with this detention complex is it's entirely going to be knocked down and an even larger prison is going to be put in its place. Of course, the local residents are furious that this is happening. And they uh, have tried multiple times to prevent it from happening, but unfortunately for the residents here, this uh, plan is going to happen and these big, this big prison is going to be put in its place. I'm also not happy about it either. I don't think they should really make a bigger prison than what is already here. After all, no one wants a prison in their neighborhood. And over here we have Baxter Street and Baxter Street along the uh, other side of the street here is home to some of the best Vietnamese restaurants in the city starting off with Thai Sun and Na Trang. Also I have to mention uh, there is a Italian restaurant next to Thai Sun which is very famous and it gets a lot of business from these courthouses and the Civic Center here. There's also some great uh, Southeast Asian cuisine on this side of the street. And here we are across the street from what is now Columbus Park. There's a lot of history with this area as well. And here's the uh, other side of the detention center. Very striking buildings, but it's all gonna be knocked down. But this park here, Columbus Park, a long time ago, was home to Paradise Square of the Five Points. And when this area was known as the Five Points, it was a dangerous area filled with a lot of slums and it was unsanitary. The uh, movie Gangs of New York really illustrated the Five Points neighborhood. Now this uh, area is home to a lot of people who gamble and play games. And something's happening over there too. Sometimes some crazy things can happen over here at these tables. I've seen fights happen and people get very emotional. There's some serious gambling going on here. I like this over here, it says stand, speak, and shape. Some bamboo with some flowers. Got some local artists.
this over here is Mulberry Street. There's some great dumpling spots around this area. And it's also home to many of the funeral homes. It's a local bookstore, You and Me Books. Tasty Dumpling has some excellent dumplings. I've been here before. I've also been to the funeral homes here. A lot more than uh, I can recall or tell you about. This is Moscow Street, before it used to be known as Park Street. After the Five Points neighborhood was literally demolished, this entire area, all the names got renamed. All the street names got renamed. Like here, this is Wharf Street. It used to be known as uh, Anthony Street. I guess the city didn't like the five points at all and really wanted to revitalize the area. That's why they renamed everything. At this corner here is one of the busiest intersections in Chinatown. I think there's like five different streets that intersect here, including Mott Street, Wharf Street, Park Row, Chatham Square, East Broadway, and um, I forget the other street on the other side there. Looks like St. James Place as well. Eventually, if the 2nd Avenue subway ever gets extended, I think there's going to be a stop here at Chatham Square. I don't know how that will be uh, incorporated though. Here's Mott Street. I'll be heading up the street shortly, but I want to show you Doyer Street which is one of the most unique streets in Chinatown and probably all of Manhattan for that matter. It's also got a notorious past. Formerly it was known as the Bloody Angle because there were warring factions who didn't like each other. They would actually camp out on that street and wage war against each other. Thankfully, that's all in the past now, and now people have gotten along a lot better. There's also tunnels which go down into Doya Street that were used to uh, ambush people. This over here in front of the Wing Fat Mansion, there's a downstairs level that right now is occupied by several businesses. 
but it used to be a tunnel to smuggle goods and other supplies. There's Doya Street. I love the lanterns that they put up here. And on the right here is a famous mural of Asian American Corky Lee who unfortunately lost his life due to the coronavirus. Very inspirational man. He documented a lot of social changes all throughout the city. That was his main goal. Tasty hand pulled noodles and the Taiwan pork shop house, which I really like for their desserts. But what's going on? Oh, they're replacing the gas pipe. So I hope they can reopen soon once that's finished. Man, Doya Street is very quiet today. Also, the, uh, the weather didn't help either. This area here that says chemists is actually a speakeasy. And this entire corner here used to be a beauty salon. You could even see the canopy. It says Bai Shi Beauty Salon, but it's no longer here. It's been vacant for quite some time now. And you cannot forget the Nam Hua Tea Parlor, which was the first dim sum restaurant in Chinatown. Although it doesn't look like they're open today. Why is Nam Wan not open today? Aha, uh -huh, because it's Wednesday and they're closed on Wednesdays. See, I didn't even know that. So don't come on Wednesdays if you want to go to Nam Wan because they're not open. Doria Street is also home to many beauty salons. I went here, Toy Apple Beauty and Barber Salon, to get my hair cut. Uh, hair cut. Also, it's uh, well known to be a spot where you can get your ears cleaned. My friend Jason Rupp has a few videos here showing the ear cleaning services that they have. I think they only charge $10 for it too. <laughs> Pell Street, which is, uh, I think, one of the tiniest, narrowest streets in Chinatown. vegetarian dim sum house. This place here is the uh, House of Joy restaurant. It replaced a restaurant that was here for a long time called 28 Pell. But I've also eaten here, House of Joy is really good. Yeah. 
here's Mott Street. I'll walk to the end here on this side of the street and then I'll go on the other side. The Church of the Transfiguration, which was here even during the Five Points days. And back then it was uh, mainly Italian and Irish who attended this church. If you want a unique cafe, you've got the Silk Row Cafe here. Looks very cozy in there. Also, there's a gaming section and card playing section on the top floor. The Wing On Wall Company which I believe is now on its third or fourth generation of ownership of, uh, in the family. They're close today though. Ping's restaurant, which is uh, really good for their dim sum. Many famous people have also dined at Ping's. You can see all the pictures on the wall of who's dined here. I'll get to the other side of the street later. This here is Hot Lee Restaurant. Now you may be curious here why there's so many restaurants with hop in their name. There's Hot Lee, Wo Hop. There's also Hot Key over there. And a long time ago, there was also a restaurant called Hop Shing on Chatham Square. And I think uh, the hop in the name comes from the association that they belong to. They all belong to this uh, lineage of the hop uh, name. This used to be a good ice cream spot, minus 10, but they've closed up. We got the Chinatown Fair, which is well known for their arcade machines. Not busy inside the fair today. Tea swirl crepe, Japanese crepes. All right, let me cross the street here. This is also a vegetarian place, the Buddha Bodai um, restaurant. It's a lot of great places for vegetarian options in Chinatown. <laughs> Don't know why that cyclist is riding on Mott Street on the sidewalk. They should be in the street there. There's Wok Wok. Wok Wok is well known for their Southeast Asian flavors. I've eaten here many times. The Noodle Village. No MSG in their cuisine. Let's see here. No MSG. MSG brings a lot of flavor to a dish, but it also has the unintended side, side effects of uh, being unhealthy for your body. 
here's Wohop next door, which is an extension of Wohop down there at in the basement level. They increased their business so much that they needed another location, but this is the original. This is probably uh, one of the oldest businesses in Chinatown, Wohop. And Hop Key, also located in the basement level. This area here around Mott Street and Pell Street was the first area to be uh, developed by the Chinese. They came from a region in China called Taishan in the Guangdong province. I also speak a little bit of that dialect, but it is very quickly fading away now. I used to use the dialect a lot more, but as of recent years, I've uh, not been practicing it at all. From time to time, you will hear people using the dialects, but it's mostly the older generation. New Golden Feng Wang Bakery, which is known for having their mooncakes in season every single month. Many of these other bakeries, they won't have mooncakes, but they will. This is a Hong Kong style cafe, Cha Ki. And Cha Cha Tang, uh, Cha Chan Tang, relocating to 43 Mott Street, which is right here. Now I guess it's Cha Ki instead of Cha Chan Tang. So they rebranded themselves and got a newer space. The stores for rents. We got 46 mod across the street. They're really good for their desserts and pastries. Also their tofu puddings. The sugar cakes are there, they are great as well. Bayard Street, nicely laid on that side. If you go down just one block from here, at the end of the block, there's a great place there called Mei Lai Wa, and they have, you know what, let me go there. Instead of talking about it, it's only a block away. Gong Cha, great bubble tea spot. Looks like there's no line for a Mei Lai Wa today. But they have the best roast pork buns in Chinatown. And they're only a dollar fifty each. 
And they also have the pineapple bun with roast pork, which is $1.85. You can also order digitally here and pay with card, but it is more expensive if you pay by card, so I'll show you. You see, the roast pork bun is $1.70, but if you pay by cash, it's $1.50. So you're saving 20 cents with cash. Yer Wang restaurant, which is known for their roast meats. Down this way, there's also VV bubble tea as well as a Hong Kong cafe. The Bayard meat market is good too. They've also got a uh, hot lunches here too so don't let the name fool you you can get cooked hot prepared meals at the uh, Bayard market as well this over here is the uh, produce section and the fish section a gift store mango mango which is a great uh, great place for desserts and down here in the basement, you can get a $6 haircut, which I believe is probably the cheapest price for a haircut anywhere in New York City. Unless you go to like a haircutting school or something where they'll do it for free. The original Chinatown Ice Cream Factory, which is by far the best place to get ice cream in Chinatown. They've got unique flavors such as pandan, lychee, and the don tot, which is the egg custard dessert. That one's actually my favorite, the don tot. Shanghainese restaurant. Wonton Noodle Garden. They're known for their wonton noodle soups. Of course, they gotta put the picture right in the middle here so you can see it, but that's what you get. This is the CCBA building the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association pretty much acts as a neighborhood liaison for the area. A lot of great places here. Well, this store is for rent now. It used to be Coco Blues. This is a vegetarian restaurant. The headquarters of the Anlong Merchants Association. They recently had their building renovated. Now you can see it's a lot brighter now and cleaned up. And now it has LED lights as well.
crossing Canal Street again and I'll take you to the 98 food court where I'll show you some incredible spots to eat inside 98 food court. So I featured this food court before back in November when they had their grand opening. I live streamed the entire grand opening and there's a lot of stores here that have now updated their menus and some new places have opened up as well. And I wanted people to be aware, aware of it because many people here pass by and not, don't even know what it is. Because if you look directly in here like this, it kind of looks like a temple and you wouldn't expect the food court. But this is Chinatown's newest food court. Only one of its kind. But it's home to the anchor store here, 89 Eatery, which is known for their dim sum. See everything here is fresh. Also, their fried dough. Hello, happy new year. Peking duck, roast kitchen, uh, chicken. The iCook AI kitchen now has a menu. Before they didn't, and didn't even have this counter set up. But you can see here they have a lunch uh, menu and also a takeout menu. Before they just had uh, on grand opening, they had samples. How are you doing? I'm showing people the menu now. Now everything's open. Everything here is cooked with a machine and they've uh, really simplified the process. We've got a stall here for the Kam Ki. And on this side of the food court, there's a new stall. There's two new stalls on this side of the food court. Yan Wo Do Bun Incorporated. They're bringing their tofu pudding and soy uh, products into Chinatown and the food court. I've yet to try this place. This stall is for rent. Burger Pizza by Quan. Oh, hey. Hi! Hey. What's hey. up? House burger with fries. And they're known for their flatbread pizza too. I'll show you the clips after I walk through. They also got a uh, menu here. But it's definitely something you should try and come by because they're one of the best uh, stalls here in the food court. I got the Nutan there, see that? My most robot in the Mario Marquis. Oh, yeah. No, see the picture. Oh, here. I see. Yeah. He's a famous chef from the Marriott Hotel. You see? This wasn't here the last time. Mr. Kwan's a. Uh, well-known chef. Thank you. All right. And here we've got Goza Dumpling, which is also a new uh, place. Hello. They're making the dumplings in the back. And Domo Sushi, the best sushi omakase. Let me tell you, when you see the clips from this omakase, you're gonna be amazed. 
And last but not least, Gen Pin Cafe, which now has a lot more on its menu. They've got pastries now, also yogurt drinks, a fruit cheesecake, and some uh, drinks on display for you to see. So this is their special house burger. Look at the size of this thing. It's $18. So what's in here? Lobster, the lobster meat. beef, tomato, pico, and uh, onion. Okay. And the green. All right, let's try this and thing. the sauce, in the house sauce. It's the two high the sauce, the lobster sauce, and the beef sauce. Juan Burger and Pizza House Burger. Let's open this thing up. Oh my gosh. That actually looks really good. So this thing's got like two different kinds of meat. Cheese, onions, tomato. Hopefully it doesn't squish out when I eat this thing. But this is some serious burger. I think this side eating it will be better. So I was only able to get a piece of it, but I had the lobster and the bun. The bun is uh, perfectly charred. The cheese is great. I think I had a bit of the lobster, though I couldn't really taste it too well. But. There's really no way you can eat this in one big bite unless you like really compact it. Mm. This lobster meat is great, tender. I taste the uh, tomato and onion as well. Let me go into the beef side. Mm. Beef is excellent. Tastes the house sauce. The house sauce kind of reminds me of like a Thousand Island dressing a little bit, it, with a little bit of a hint of the uh, Big Mac sauce from McDonald's. But yeah, this is a serious house burger for your money. And uh, Quan Burger and Pizza is a great job making this thing. It is uh, something else. So come check these guys out. We have the. This is what he used to do. Master Chef Quan here. The Gen Pin Cafe, bubble tea, coffee, bakery, cakes. They just launched their bubble teas last week. As you can see, there's the different flavors. And I got the perfume green lime right here. He cut up the fresh lime for me. I saw him making it. It looks good. Looks like in order to open it, I got to pull on this thing. Pretty simple. Cheers. Oh, well, there's a piece of lime sticking out there. But this is really good. Refreshing. I got 25% sugar, so it's a little bit on the sour side, but it's good for my taste. I really like it. It gives you a uh, relaxed feeling. And this is what a uh, ice drink should be. Kind of like a uh, lemonade, but chilled. Mm. And I do taste the perfume in it too. There's a little bit of like floral uh, taste in it. Perfect for this. So thumbs up for me for the perfume green lime at Gen Pen Cafe. The 
Look at that piece of fish. This is a grouping toro from Spain uh, with a miso paste. Bluefin tuna sushi from Domo Sushi. Let's try it out. You saw him making it. Let's try it. Mm. This has to be one of the best pieces of sushi I've ever had. The tuna is so tender. The sushi rice is blends everything together, and I love the sauce. Mm. Excellent. Kambachi yellow tuna from Japan with a sasha sauce. Another piece of sushi. Mm. This is excellent. Where are you from? Very good. I was here, but I'm, um, was raised in I France. love the sauce. Winter truffle uh, is okay, but this price is uh, very expensive. You, know? you, you still can get it, but the price is uh, expensive. Okay. Braca with the uh, winter truffle. What's the name of the fish? Braca. Black carp? Yeah. Oh, okay. Carp yeah. fish. Black carp winter truffle. Wow, really, really good. I really taste the truffle flavor in here. The fish blends in perfectly. Excellent. Here we've got scallops from Hokkaido, Japan. Very, very good. It's like silky, like smooth. Yeah. Okay, I put the, the, the bamboo salt on the top. Mm. Japanese bamboo salt. Japanese bamboo salt on the top too. This is another slice of tuna from the belly part. Looks very different than what I had before. sushi at the top of this game. This tuna is so good it just like slides in your mouth it's got a little bit of bounce to it. Excellent. Mm. Norwegian salmon with tomato. Mm. I like this one the Norwegian salmon a lot of flavor. The tomato mixed with the salmon too is excellent. And the the sauce at the top kind of reminds me of a uh, a salmon uh, with cream cheese bagel, but it's rice, and I love it. <laughs> Three layer tuna sushi with winter truffle. Here we go. Fantastic. I really have no other words to describe it. It's uh, that good. Oh man. Lobster and salmon roll. Take a look at this thing. This thing has so many different layers here. It's incredible. Let me see if I can taste the lobster and the salmon in one bite.
This one is excellent. I have to say, this is probably my favorite piece of sushi yet. I like the crunch that it has and um, you can taste the lobster with it. It is excellent. Kapachi and salmon. Kambachi and salmon and I can tell why uh, they gave me a bowl because it's a little bit messy. You can very easily be able to break apart on you, but let's try it. Mm. This one I like it. It's very refreshing. Mm. And the sauce gives it extra flavor. This is one of my favorites. Okay. Take a look at this thing. It is a masterpiece. Looks like an ice cream cone. It is. The British hamburger. Yeah. Alright, let's try this ice cream cone version of a sushi. Hey, okay. Wrapped in, uh, wrapped in seaweed with tons of flares. Mm. It's great. Ooh. Coconut matcha dessert. There's layers in this. You open for dinner? Yes. Mm. That sushi dinner was only seventy dollars, and for what you get, it was amazing. Everything was fresh. Some of the best tasting sushi I ever had. But yeah, come down to ninety eight Mont Street Food Court because they have a wide variety of great places to eat at, and Domo Sushi is one of them. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching the video. Subscribe, smash the like button. I'll see you later.